Uh, well, well, thank you all for this. This is quite a remarkable um, opportunity to, uh, to hear from two legends. If they do. Uh, they can hear, <laughs> and if you shut up, they will hear okay. from <laughs> um, So, uh, you've just seen the film, Lee's Life. I thought that we would start by, um, by asking Lee the genesis of the film. Uh, you wrote the book, the book was a bestseller, and but the phone must have rung one day. Would you like to tell us what happened then, in terms of from there to actually getting the film onto the, to the screen? Sure. Um, actually, the, the strange thing was I never wanted a book or a movie. Um, now we tell I, I never did. <laughs> it, was, it was scary, I thought. Uh, and when I stayed in America, Hollywood, I don't know if I ever told you, Hollywood uh, offered me th th three different offers made three different offers. And uh, I was 20 then, I just, what was the most incredible thing, I just thought, no, no way. And then over the years, people pursued me, but I really, the main thing I thought was just, you know, my life story just is one of the same uh, of over billions of people in China. And I thought, it was rather self-indulgent, I thought I would have my story written or uh, showing a film. Um, but then, Eventually, when I finished my dancing career here in Australia, and then I went to the seaside place with my family and several other families, and one night, one of the famous Australian-based children's authors, uh, Graham Bass, and he encouraged me to write my story after I shared a little bit about my childhood experiences. He said to me then, and I said, as always, I said, no, 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 I, I don't want a story, I don't want a book. He said, Lee, the book is not for you, it's for others. And your story will inspire others. Um, so that was the reason I started thinking. And then when I, the next morning, I couldn't quite put the idea down. During breakfast, I said to Mary, I said, Mary, should I be writing my story down? My, Mary's my wife. And she said to me, <laughs> she said, Lee, to tell you the truth, I'm sick and tired of you. Tell and retell your love stories at dinner parties. <laughs> So the night before, she's been kicking me under the table, telling me to shut up. <laughs> um, so then uh, I reluctantly wrote my story, and I would never have thought it would become such a bestseller. And then, and then again, the film interest serviced. But by, because there's a book out, so I was less scared about the movie. But in my heart, I always thought I would never allow a movie happen as long as I live, if it was not the right person or the right creative team come to produce it or to, to particularly direct it. And then came along Bruce. Uh, and of course, I've been admire of his works. Uh, and uh, uh, I just thought that if I have to choose one person to produce my story, uh, Bruce will be wonderful. So that's how. The that's movie how it came happened. Up. I don't know how many of you have read the book, but if you haven't, go out and get it. Uh, it is the most wonderful story. It's most uh, most beautifully written, and it becomes like a detective story. It it just keeps unfolding with so much drama, which of course then, as you can see, made turned it into, made it made it turn into such a wonderful film with a bit of help from. From Bruce. Bruce, do you want to take over at that point and tell us uh, how you how you got involved or what what attracted you you to it? The first I knew of it was when um, Jane Scott approached me with a script written by um, Jan Sardi. Jan, Jan Sardi, and which I thought was pretty good. Um, and then uh, I said, let me let me meet the author uh, and read his book. And I read the book, which I thought was, was just fabulous. And in fact, I think I picked out a few things in the book that weren't in the script that we added. Yeah. And then Lee told me some, I think I stayed with you for a while in Melbourne. I stayed down you there did. a few days. And Lee told me more stories, um, that a couple of which we did put in the book. Remember there was that wonderful scene I love where the officials go to visit her and she rounds on them and says, this is all your fault, not mm. my fault. That was a story that you told me, and I thought, yeah. what a wonderful scene that would make. Mm. And in fact, it did. It was fabulous. Um, but then, uh, basically, we filmed Jane's very capable script. I mean, that was the normal process you go through with a writer. And um, we put it all together. We got 
Did we ever get permission to film in China? No. I'm not sure we did. No. <laughs> we went well, there. Before, yeah. be, before we get to there, I think it's, it's, a, it's an enormously ambitious story for Australians to take on, given that virtually doesn't ha nothing happens in Australia at all. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it made me quite quail just thinking about it. Um, but also, Lee, I think at that time you were a stockbroker, so you were, you were able to help with the financing? Did you yes. have something, quite a lot to do it with was, that? It was very strange because uh, after the book was published, uh, then I um, was invited to speak in a lot of conferences and uh, corporate events, uh, schools and all that. And, uh, um, and I was all of a sudden become a highly sought after speaker. And then, over those events, I met um, people with capacity to invest. Let's call them wealthy people. <laughs> <laughs> and then, uh, wealthy, the, crazy the, people. over the years, they said, oh, this will make a fantastic movie. I want to invest. If there's a movie project, could you let me know? So I, subconsciously, I wrote, kept people's names <laughs> into a list. I thought, oh, well, if, <laughs> if, uh, if, there, if there's a chance there. And, and then when uh, Jan, Jan Sardi, who's the one approached me first, the, uh, the screenplay writer, and uh, I loved um, uh, the, the film um, Shine yeah. that he wrote. And then, uh, so I started talking to Jane Scott, the producer. And at that time, at the beginning, there were a lot of interest to invest from the German, Germans, from Hollywood, and from various uh, government, uh, you know, sort of uh, film uh, you know, agencies. And then somehow, one by one, uh, they start falling away. But before they fall, uh, 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 fall away, I said to Jane, just a throwaway line, uh, you know, one day I said, Jane, look, there are a group, small group of um, potential investors who have expressed interest over the years, if you ever need help, um, I'm certainly willing to uh, you know, share these names with you. You can then have a conversation with them. And, uh, and she said, oh yeah, okay. She never really thought anything about it because at that time, there was a lot of interest out there. And when those interests thinned, she came back to me and said, Lee, did, didn't you tell me you got some people interested? I said, yes. And she said, how much do you think you they might be able to contribute. I said, maybe about four or five million dollars. I just threw a rough number. <laughs> and, and then when my firm, Bell Potter, was in, uh, heard there could, could be a film project, because a lot of people, uh, you know, the investors in that group, have asked me to speak for their Melbourne, Sydney offices. So after each of these um, these events, a lot of them have gone to their respective advisors, says if there's a movie we want, we want to invest. So Bell Potter knew there was a genuine interest. So then they made a uh, sophisticated investor's offer. And we were thinking we're going to raise up to $10 million. Because I think i quite confident that my group could raise about four to, four to five. I was not joking. And then we opened the offer. Overnight, we had more than $25 million interest. Absolutely unbelievable. Unbelievable. That, that was it towards, we won't go Are on about... Are you still in touch with these blokes? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I want their phone Can number. Can I have their numbers? Uh, <laughs> Just write them down. <laughs> that, that was at a time when, when investors got a tax deduction mm -hmm. for investing in films, which, which helps at the timing. Anymore? Not anymore. No, mm. private investors don't get... Uh, any anything anymore, but that, uh, that was There's that a was that producer's was a, rebate. Now, so the timing it? was fantastic, yeah, and it, it was. was it was really wonderful I that think you were we, able to get. So it. I think we had choices at that time, either the investors or the producers rebate. But now it's only one. Yeah, it's it? only okay. the one. That's right. That's right. So I guess having got having got to that amazing situation, you then had to cast the film, and I think that's one of the most interesting aspects. Of yes, the casting, film. it was it's a particularly those difficult film to cast. Acting dancers was just incredible. See, we had to find a dancer to play Lee, which was terribly difficult because what we needed was a Chinese dancer who spoke perfect English, also spoke Chinese, and was really a dancer on an international level. It couldn't be just some 
average dancer. He had to be really good. Well, you so, really needed three, didn't you? In a well, way, in a way the, or two. But that role, the was, the key, that yes. role was the key one. Oh. The younger boys weren't so difficult. But um, Jane Scott and I went. We went first to Hong Kong, I Hong think, Kong, and met some yes. people. And then and you we, went to UK. Well, we met some guys in Hong Kong who were very good dancers, but their English was very shaky, and I thought they could never do the role. Then we heard about this dancer in England with the Royal Ballet, Chi Chow, and we went up to the north of England, saw him dance, and I met him the next, well, arranged, he knew we were coming. The next morning I met him, and God, it was cold, but I met him the next morning, and he read some of the stuff for me, and he said, well, do you think I could do this? And I said, absolutely. In fact, what would we have done without him? <laughs> but in fact, yeah. when you just saw the film, He's a very fine dancer and a wonderful actor. And I, we were really lucky to have him. He was a, you know, a handsome leading man, really. <laughs> well, <laughs> He was just what we wanted. Well, the, uh, when, when Bruce and I were start talking about, uh, Bruce asked me, I don't know if you still remember, says, do you have somebody in mind who could um, play you, who could dance like you? I said, well, I do, but I said, I'm not sure. Oh, I, I know a couple of good dancers who could possibly dance at a high standard, but I said, I'm not sure they can act. And Bruce said to me, I, it was so funny, I said, uh, uh, he said, Lee, unless they are totally stupid, I think I can teach them how to act. <laughs> <laughs> and and Chi Tao, you saw, uh, the reason I got to know him was he's actually the son of two of my former teachers at the Beijing Dance Academy. When we first went in there, my group was all between age of eight to 12. And uh, so we, we all needed a lot of caring, a lot of love. And then there were two teachers were assigned, they were young teachers, and they were both single at the time. One male, one female, they were our surrogate parents. So after nine o'clock at night, when all the lights in the dormitory has to be all turned off, we live a military life, really. And then there are only two rooms the lights can be allowed to stay on was these two teachers' rooms. And then I think just conquered their boredom. They eventually got together and they <laughs> fell up. <laughs> and then Chi was their child. So when I was first allowed to go back to China, everybody said, oh, there's, uh, we call teacher Tao and teacher Shi says they got a talented son and started ballet. And I pick in the window one day and then they asked me to teach a master class and he was in my class. I taught master class and I thought he was very talented. So I've been interested through his career progress mm -hmm. and he won gold medals and all that. So he was a wonderful dancer. We certainly and he must off, have gone he? to England when he was fairly young. He was. Yeah, because his English was, was, was really perfect. And yeah. he went there a uh, similar age as me, was around 18 uh, when I left China. So, we had, so when he said to me, when he read my book before the movie um, uh, you know, offer came along, he felt there was certain affinity, uh, you know, sort of uh, similar experiences, particularly when I described my sickness, homesickness, and, you know, felt going to a foreign country and all that, he felt exactly the same way. Yeah, yeah so he, under, he understood. So uh, I think, that, well, the next thing, I suppose, was, was staging the dancing sequences because they are, I think, I just love them in the film. I think they just, you just kind of get lost in them. Yes, that um, was true. Well, we had Graham Murphy, right. the famous Australian choreographer, and I don't know how we got Graham. Did you recommend him or somebody? I think he was very well known. I, I gave uh, yeah. Gene Scott a few names. And he was and one of them. he was one of them. Right. Anyway, he came on board quite early and he had a lot to do because he had to choreograph all the ballets, including the Chinese ballets. Mm. So mm. when you had the Chinese dancers doing those uh, patriotic things, he had to do them as well. And he got a um, lot of kids. In, I remember the... Um, uh, the, the authorities in Beijing were not happy about us taking kids from the ballet school. And he went out to some provincial cities and got kids from more provincial dance classes and brought them in by bus. I mean, he was and had them all being trained up. They were very enthusiastic. So you, They you, were pretty good, weren't yeah, they? They were. They were. <laughs> you filmed some, because this is the other, the other 
interesting thing about the film, I think, is the locations and where you filmed it. Quite a lot of the film uh, is, is, is filmed in China. Oh, a lot. We were uh, there for a long time. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we filmed... It was quite tricky filming scenes like the rural village because China has changed mm. so much um, over those years, a fairly short period. I know the cameraman, Peter James, who photographed this, had been in China making documentaries previously. And he said to me, I can't believe it. He said, when I was here a few years ago, I never saw a car. He said, now it's, it's like Sydney, Brisbane, it's like a big city, there's cars everywhere. But um, going out to the countryside, we had to find that rural village. There's almost none. Mm. And uh, we couldn't locate them because people have been re rehoused in modern blocks. And, um, you know, they had central heating. Everything was much better than it was. And then at the last minute, we found that village that's in the opening of the film, which had been left there because the local farmers were using the houses to store grain. So we were able to use that authentic looking village. We didn't actually have to build it. She had an amazing, Absolutely. amazing. No, I think what I, Sue, what I loved about. Um, of the film to uh, was the authenticity of the China scenes. Um, right. I remembered when I, during uh, one of the trips, I went back to China to visit on site when um, Bruce and the crew were working. When I went into the room where they were filming one of this, uh, you know, oh, my mother enjoy. cooking yeah. scene, I, I just almost like a deja vu for me. It just right. literally wow. shocked me. I felt like that was the home. That was the right. very room I grew up. That's the very room we ate our food. It was yeah. pretty incredible. And I think you had a very good A team in China working. We had stuff. a very good Chinese team and a very good, an Australian designer. production designer, Herbert mm. Pinter, working with the Chinese design. Chinese art, art department. Yeah. Even the bikes and mm. the and the bicycles you use in the film yeah. was just all, I don't know where you found them. They were just, must be antique now. It was incredible. Yes, because yeah. still, it was, it was a period film, oh, wasn't well, it? Because it was then, yeah, being 30, yeah. years, 30 yeah. years before we had, was when the events took place. And we had place. to get those, we had that wonderful little boy yeah. oh, playing was with a small child. He was a great kid. Not a yes, I believe yeah. he's now a ballet dancer. He uh, actually he? continued ballet, yes, oh. I heard that. Yeah. I'm, I'm waiting for him to audition for us. <laughs> oh, he was a lovely kid. Of course, he didn't speak a word of English, and I could only talk to him through an interpreter. But um, he had a great temperament and tremendous... A great uh, presence, that kid, didn't he? Yeah, yeah. very cute. He had a very good presence. And also, in China, too, you didn't have this thing that they have in Australia or America or England where they say the children can only work mm. for four hours and then they have to stop and have a rest. The children... <laughs> <laughs> They'd be there all day, and I said, Are these kids all right? They all seem to be happy enough, so I said, Well, we'll just keep going. You know? yeah. Yes, it, it, quite wonderful because here they've got to, mm, you know, it's very strict. You get now. into real trouble. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, probably their schoolwork went, went um, a bit awry for that amount of time. Uh, the other thing is, is, of course, as I said earlier, none of it is set in Australia, and yet. Apart from the, from the Chinese, the, the, the locations in China, everything was filmed in Australia pretty well. It was. We only did um, a couple of days filming in Texas. Right. That was all. Everything else was shot in New South Wales. Right. Uh, for the American scenes. I probably shouldn't have told you that. I've spoiled it now. Probably. <laughs> You'll have to see the film but again. When, when, it, when it was shown in America, nobody picked up the fact that it wasn't shot there. Oh. Nobody. No. Not one critic ever said it's clearly not filmed in America. They all believed it. Yeah. Uh, and of course, a lot of the roles were taken by Australians who are um, pretty convincing. Uh, oh, yes. Um, well, we had two American actors. Yes. Bruce Greenwood and Carl McLaughlin. Mm. Yeah. You had three, didn't you? There, there's another one. There oh, uh, and Laurie, Amanda, Amanda Shaw. Uh, no, uh, also, Laurie's, uh, uh, Laurie's husband. Who was that? I um, <laughs> can't remember his name. <laughs> He's, uh, he's wear the te a, a Texan hat, a, a cowboy hat. Wasn't that, wasn't that Carl McLaughlin? No. Carl is uh, Charles Foster. That's right. I and haven't seen this film for a long time. <laughs> but, um, but, but he worked, oh, here, mean, he worked here for, for a while, then he got back to America. You, you, don't, mean Aiden, you don't mean Aiden Young? 
No. No, Aiden no. wasn't in it. Aiden's yeah. in it. Yeah, that's right. Aiden Young that's, is that, in Eddie it. Young. Eddie oh. Young. Oh. Eddie Young. That's you see, <laughs> once the films are finished, I don't watch them again. So... Uh, I yeah. haven't seen it for years. I'm not sure if everybody knows, but when you're making a film, you see it in post-production, you see it maybe a hundred times. Oh, more. In putting it together 200 times. You've seen mm. it by the time you've finished. By the time the, time is, the film is finished, it's like an aversion therapy, really. You really don't want to see it again. Yes. Until maybe 20 years later. And but then it's kind of can. nutty to sort of uh, sit around thinking, what will I do with myself? <laughs> I might watch one of my own films. <laughs> I mean, you don't do that, you know. <laughs> Yes. And the other thing that, that's interesting to me is the structure of how you told the story. Uh, because you'd, 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 you kind of plunge into the middle of the story um, with Lee arriving in America. Oh, and then tell and it then in flashback. And then you go backwards and yes. forwards and um, it, yes. it, it kind of works. But That was actually you my idea, I remember, because mm. originally it was told chronologically yeah. Yeah. and I said I think it would be more interesting to do it um, out of sequence and to flash back to the childhood, the, the adult and so on and so forth, which I thought gave it a more, in a way, a more dramatic structure. I thought you did that to uh, entice the Western audience. <laughs> I was thinking of that. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't yes. want to start the film with people talking in Chinese with subtitles. Yeah. I wanted to start it in English. Right, yes. yes. Which was, because there's often a resistance to subtitled movies. Yes. Um, which uh, always struck me as irrational and never worried me. But well, it's amazing. I thought, <clears throat> yeah, I think because it exists, I thought uh, it was better to start the film in English. I think if you, if you think that there are subtitles, you, there's a resistance, but once you watch a film with subtitles, I don't imagine how, how you felt tonight, you forget that they're there, and when you go, when you've, after the film's over, you forget you saw it in subtitles. You just remember the story. But it was a good, good move, I think, I think to, it was a um, smart move. Uh, to start it in English and settle everybody down in a nice Western environment. <laughs> uh, but I know a lot of, especially talking to young people, um, and you talk to them about movies, so often people say to me, oh, I never go to subtitled films, they won't watch them. I said, I don't want to go to a film I have to read. That's still yeah. pretty yeah. common. I don't know how you lot feel, but is this true? No? Oh, but they're all intellectuals. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I, it's a, it's a, it, the book is... The, the, the book is... A, is is quite large. It's quite long, and there's a very you know. Um, it was. It must have been quite a job to get to, to just. I think you distilled the story down very well. To well, Jan like Sardi did a good I job guess. of that, really. Yeah. 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 I I worked with Jan for twelve months. Right. Mm. Um, that was one of my conditions. I just thought if the screenplay is right, because I don't want a movie that that is so. Uh, taking so far away from the truth. Yeah. So I want to have a movie that I can live with. So I thought if the screenplay has integrity, has you know, has is honest, then uh, I think then the movie with a with a good yeah. uh, director, then the movie will have integrity. I you know, then my grandchildren will be able to say that's you know that's our grandfather's story, not somebody else's you know yeah. Hollywood's really interpretation. Um, so uh, I was insistent, and, and which Jan is, was very happy right. for me to work with him. So yeah. we worked for 12 months together. Which is, yes, because yeah. you certainly didn't have to invent any drama. I mean, it's all there, and the, no. it's all there in your story. But it's, in, it's a matter of what you choose and the selection of what you choose and it is in tricky. telling I mean, the story. Doing a film like that for either a writer or a director is a very tricky job because, see, you've got to enter into another culture. I mean, I knew nothing about China. Your book taught me a lot. Talking to you taught me a lot. But then you have to really, when, you go, when I had to go to China, I had to be so careful to recreate the way people lived. You don't want to do what's so easy to do as to, in effect, turn them all into Australians and make the behaviour different. You have to really respect the way people live. I've done this in other films as well. It's quite hard. It's, you, you have to really keep your wits about you and do things like make sure that the bicycles are correct. All those sort of things. And that the, all the stuff like in the dormitories and everything is believable. And you know, so I thought, I thought yeah. the Chinese actors were fabulous. 
We've uh, got some very good Chinese. Yeah, Joan yeah. Chen and yeah. my father figure. And, yes. Uh, they were my, the teacher, um, Teacher Chen. They were all, I mean, Teacher Chen was actually a real ballet teacher at, from the Beijing Dance Academy. So uh, that's how authentic that, that, that whole cast is, actually. Right. Um, and when my parents saw the film, uh, particularly the scene uh, where uh, the Chinese government officials came to accuse them when I defected, um, my mother sobbed. Is that right? Yeah. Mm. Because right. it triggered a lot of memories back. Yes, it would have. Yes, yes. I Jack. met your parents. Mm. Yes. Yeah. Yes, that was great. <laughs> <laughs> I think the one time that you did Hollywood Eyes at a bit was, was I'm sorry, <laughs> 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 was having the um, having ha having Lee not know that his parents were coming to uh, to the ballet. I thought that was true. That that was partly true. Uh -huh. um, well, the, uh, well, I just read the book. The, I reread knew, the book, yeah, so I'm, I knew I'm I knew up my with parents this. were coming, but really not know exactly okay. when they were coming because that right. whole trip and was you were always wondering arranged. if they'd get an exit visa, weren't right. you? Yeah, yeah. But I just wait. So, uh, I thought so was that was all. That was all planned by by right. my friends. It was so by Ben Stevens in particular. Right. He wanted that to be a surprise. Uh, okay, visit. I just thought when I first saw the film that I was worried. I thought you would drop dead actually <laughs> when you saw them. The, uh, the was, shock of trying to perform and, was, and know that they were there without any knowledge at all. It gave us a great scene. It did give you a great scene, but it <laughs> I was so emotional. Bothered me quite a lot. Yeah, I was so emotional uh, of that performance. Uh, I, oh. it was, the memory is still so vivid. I can imagine. I must uh, when I was writing that scene, even though many years have passed, but it was as though it was only happened yesterday. No. So it was just, you know, one of, it's one of those moments just imprinting your mind, yeah. in your memory forever. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure. Why didn't you have any pants? Did it, why didn't you wear any pants? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yeah, that was true. I remember that. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, uh, I I was dancing the Nutcracker. Wasn't uh, Rod of Spring, and uh, um, so I, I was the prince. I wore uh, the white tights, but even then, my father said, "Why didn't you wear any tie, uh, any any pants?" <laughs> <laughs> Just in your underwear. Um, so it was, uh, yeah, it was very, uh, it was very funny. <laughs> Talking about I thought he was going to say something. It was after performance. It, they came on the stage uh, during the intermission, and which we didn't have a chance to meet before because they were so late. And then they came on the stage, and we were all crying and all that. And then my mother had taken out her uh, in a handkerchief to dry, try to dry my tears away but her handkerchief was already soaking wet by her own tears. <laughs> and then after the performance, uh, they were led to the VIP room to meet uh, a few of, uh, of the you know, artists. And that's what, what we call the green room in the, in the theater. And after all the uh, guests, they were not the only, only ones, after all the guests left, only three, or three of us left behind. My parents walked towards me as they walked closer and closer. I could clearly see this positive expression on my father's face. And he kept looking me up and down, up and down. And finally, I was expecting something, you know, a compliment or something. <laughs> finally, he said, why didn't you wear any pants? <laughs> <laughs> talking, of, uh, talking, talking of underwear, there's a... There's a, there's a really? Man, I went <laughs> There's a there's a um, a moment in in the book which is not in the film which really got to me which was when when you're first auditioning you little kids a bunch of little boys auditioning for the, for the ballet and the um, uh, and the ballet teacher says you take off your clothes and we'll do this in their underwear and none of them would take their clothes off and he said you know I can't take your clothes off and Lee was the only one who and one of them said but I'm not wearing any underwear. <laughs> <laughs> and Lee, I think you said in the book you're the only one who, who actually was, and they were so poor, 
Yeah. This is That's it. Right. It just got to, to me. It just got the yeah. poverty home to me in a way that almost nothing else did. You yeah. know. That and that pair of underwears I wore wasn't even mine. <laughs> is that right? <laughs> it was one of my. Uh, I was the sixth in, in the family of seven boys, and because we're peasant, um, we're so poor. You, you know, it just said the same for you. Between 1958 to 1961, there were over 35 to 40 million people died of starvation in China. So I was born in 1961. So the five brothers before me, it was after miracle they survived. Mm -hmm. So when I grew up, we had very so little. So all of the clothes we wore was all passed me down clothes, including underwears. And uh, I have begged seeing my older brothers wearing underwears, the thing that, you know, which I don't have. So I begged my mother year, year after year. It was the Chinese New Year time. I always begged my mother more because it was Chinese New Year time where you get good food, you get a New Year presents and all that. I said, I always ask my mother, Niang, could I have a pair of underwear? Uh, in underwear, it's like my older brothers. Her words was always, we can't afford it. You have to wait for your turn. Your turn, which is now the passed down pair. <laughs> and my fifth brother got his that year. And uh, that pair of underwear, he, which I don't think he loved as much as I do. <laughs> <laughs> and so I, I, I've stolen away from him <laughs> that morning. So he obviously did not miss it. <laughs> and, then, and then it was sad looking. And it was, was thickly patched up layer upon layer by my mother. So still I have to share that pair with other kids. Right. I think, as I said, I think that sort of drove it home to me more than anything else. Um, I think we should, it, 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 time for some questions, I think, if anybody, uh, would anybody like to ask one of these two amazing people anything? Here, have we got have we got a mic or ah, sorry, you'll be I next. There, is it? Oh, <laughs> actually, why don't you scream out? We can repeat the question. Oh, there, there, there. You got it. Oh, you got it now. <laughs> it's a tough conversation to follow to say anything. Well, put that near your mouth. Yeah. Is that better? There, yeah. yes. Point it towards you. Yeah. I, uh, I think I don't really have a question, but I just wanted to say um, how much it means to me to see you here today and to hear from you about the production of this film, which meant so much to me as a child, and that I can't remember who you said said it, but they were certainly right when uh, someone said to you that this film would be made and the book would be made for other people, because hearing your story as a child made me believe so greatly in principles of justice and liberty and has really inspired me growing up um, looking through the eyes of another child when I was a child to live uh, taking every opportunity that I can. Good on you. Well, Good on you, yes. Well, huh? <laughs> Why are you... Thank you very much for sharing your story with us. Uh, I'm wondering, is there any chance there'll be a sequel? <laughs> <laughs> Only if Bruce directed. <laughs> no, I don't think so. Uh, I think they have captured all my stories. That's, uh, that's all. Unless they want to make a movie of my directorship with the Quenzat Ballet, <laughs> then I'll be happy to entertain that <laughs> notion. Uh, <laughs> it's not for you, it's for us. <laughs> <laughs> Is it? There's a man yeah, over there. Yeah, sorry. I actually have two questions, one for Lee and one for Bruce and Sue. Lee, when you initially went to America, like, how full on was the culture shock because I can just imagine just mm. like I remember the first time I went uh, overseas like the Thailand and the culture shock was just immense and for Bruce and Sue if I can ask you what your favourite directors and favourite films are Oh, that's a really I hate that question. I, oh, think let's leave, let, I think we should let Lee answer. No, let Lee come <laughs> <up>. <laughs> Okay um, 
It was as though you were walking on the moon for the first time. Um, even the first day, we, the first morning we got there, um, we stayed, the two of us, stayed with our director. And uh, he sliced some oranges and made some juice for us. I feel like criminal drinking it because realizing my parents, my brothers are still home starving and they would have never tasted an orange before, let alone drinking a glass of juice from that. And you know, the first night we arrived tasting Peking duck for the first time um, and seeing the incredible boundless food and prosperity the, and especially the freedom people had. They can curse the US president without worrying their personal safety. It was just, just everything shocked us. And for Ben Stevenson to spending 200 US dollars on some tithes was years of my father's earnings, years of my family's survival, spending on our buying us the practice ties. It was just, you know, and walking to one of our major uh, donors' homes, seeing the expensive paintings on their walls, and they're talking about in the millions. Uh, it's just there are too many zeros swimming in my, in my <laughs> head to comprehend just what a different world uh, I'd walk into. So uh, it's, it's, it was just incredible, incredible new world that I never in my wildest, imagi in, in my wildest imagination could think it existed. Oh, well, that's so, for the film. Oh, it's true. There's too many. I mean, I'm, there's a lot of films and directors that I admire all over the world. I mean, I think just about every country has produced incredibly gifted filmmakers. It's very difficult to compile lists. I've often been asked to supply 10 best lists for magazines and things, and I've done it. And when I compare them, they're always different. I change my mind as time goes on. I see more films. You could perhaps talk about your favourite producer. <laughs> <laughs> but he's not around at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> I set myself up for that. Yeah. <laughs> Have we got another question? Ah, yes. Good evening. Um, was the film screened in China, and if so, how, how was it received? Oh, what was that? I was it, was the film screened in China, and if so, how was it received? Oh, well, it, as far as I know, it wasn't screened in China. But when I was uh, over there, um, after it had been finished, and um, there was a man in the street with a... Um, a wagon selling movies, and I went thought, oh, he might have something good. He had hundreds of copies of this film, <laughs> bootleg. And in fact, Chi Chow told me that he bought a hundred copies to give to relatives and friends. <laughs> but of course, it was all bootleg. We yeah. never got anything from Don't get it. Any money yeah. back. Mm. Uh, apparently, it was very popular. Mm. <laughs> and uh, and uh, actually, I bought a lot when I went back to China. <laughs> Gave, gave it to my clients and relatives. <laughs> uh, Go on. Yes. Uh, what, what tortured me most when I saw the film was the part that you felt tortured when you, after you made the decision to stay and then you were thinking and dreaming about your parents and what suffering or, you know, that they might and you had that dream. Uh, so that would be a you know, very difficult time that uh, I, would, I felt for you in, 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 in your story and uh, would be very hard to uh, conciliate you know, how to resolve the conflict that you had between your decision and how it affected your, yourself and your family. So yeah, it was, you're absolutely right. It was one of the probably the most um, darkest moment in my life when I um, stayed in America. Um, it was not just my own, I didn't celebrate, it was not joyous when I was released from the consulate. In fact, it made me feel, incre I lived in such guilt, such um, pain, 
um, an, an a nightmare. Uh, you know, th those kind of a nightmare was portrayed in the film was it was true, uh, and I uh, often uh, feared that my whole family was in trouble because of my actions. And uh, yet, throughout my life, my one wish, biggest wish in life, was to help my, help them. But yet, my defection could have caused more trouble in their lives because for years we couldn't even <coughs> write letters to to each other, so we were completely cut off from each other. I, until about eight years eight years later, I was dancing with the Houston Ballet in Washington D.C. Um, and Barbara Bush, who was still on the board of the Houston Ballet then, invited my director and I to the White House for coffee because when I first went to uh, Houston, Barbara Bush was on the board of Houston Valley, invited the two of us to their home to have lunch because uh, her husband was the first special, um, you know, official was sent to China and Nixon. So through that initial meeting, and she uh, f somehow took a special interest in me. So when, throughout my dancing career, she was very proud. And when I became a star, went to dance in Kennedy Center, she always made, made time to see me. And then during that meeting, she learned about my difficulties with China. She was shocked that I was still have not been allowed to go back to China. So on the opening night of the Swan Lake performance, I was dancing the Prince that night, the Bushes invited the Chinese ambassador and culture attache to see me dance. It was that night the, the Bushes asked the Chinese guests if they could help me. And then subsequently, my parents got the permission to leave China. So, uh, but that was 80 years of separation, N not knowing they're alive or dead. They did not know that I was alive or dead. So you can imagine just what an incredible time that was for, for them and for me. Yes. Um, Lee, if you don't mind sharing, I just wondered, is your family all still in China? And also, I wonder how you felt when you went to America and you saw this abundance and prosperity and you realised it wasn't what you had been taught in terms of what Western life is like, how you felt about um, China and the Chinese government and, and, and those <laughs> teachings. Uh, sure. I, I answer your second question first. Um, when I went to America, I really, uh, when I realized the Western world was not as scary, as dirty, as filthy, as dangerous as I was told, I was brainwashed to believe under the, you know, the uh, mass, mass propaganda. And then that was the first time at age 18 I started to question question everything I've learned. Uh, in my book, I describe as though the, the floor underneath me was pulled away, or all, all of a sudden disappeared. I was looking for answers. Everything was lost, and my belief and everything. So uh, it, was, it was then I really, you know, it, the, the one thing, I mean, obviously I fell in love with Elizabeth, and that, that helped me to make, make up my mind to stay in America, but it was the freedom. It was really the freedom the Western world enjoyed and it gave you the chance and possibility to achieve whatever you want in life. That's one thing that was not allowed under that strict control of the Chinese system. And what's the second question, sorry? My parents, my parents have passed away uh, and my um, six... Uh, of uh, my, uh, five of my six brothers still alive. My oldest brother passed away. So they are still all in China. But over the years, uh, we have sponsored three of my nieces from th uh, three different brothers to come to, America, uh, to Australia to study. So they, all three of them are now settled in Melbourne. Um, and so uh, four of my brothers have since visited us here. And I, I'm hoping my fifth brother, the other one, will come as well. But I'm just about to take in Queensland Ballet to perform in China next month. So I will see my family again. <laughs> and uh, 
and I'm taking a small group of supporters, uh, donors group, to visit my family. Um, so that's going to be very special. My family is very excited. We might make this the last question, I think, yeah. Uh, this is, um, it's been a very enjoyable session, and I hadn't seen the movie for years, and I really enjoyed it even more this time than I did the last time, so it's been great. But my question for, for you, Lee, is um, with all the amazing amount of experience you've had in life, what are the, th the best things you've passed on to your kids as far as advice? Oh, it's a bit deep. That's like, who's your favourite uh, producer? Okay. Well, <laughs> <laughs> I'm still... I'm still working on being a fatherhood, a good, <laughs> a, a, a good father. But I, I, I think the best things I could pass on to my children is to live a life with integrity, honesty, and dignity, no matter what. And that's what the values my dear parents have passed to their children. And when life was too hard, it was too difficult, you sometimes, through my childhood, I just want to end my life. And those are the stuff that kept, you know, kept us going on living, hoping by living this kind of, really obey these kind of qualities, these kind of values in life. And then you will eventually, no matter how hard life is, will give you a satisfying, a rewarding life at the end. Well, I think we should thank uh, another round of applause for, to thank Bruce and Lee for a pretty interesting conversation. Oh. <laughs>